Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Torrential rain overnight. The heaviest is moving off to the east, and now flooding is a big threat this morning. And all that rainfall has led to a messy morning commute. We're here in the traffic lab tracking it all. And taking a look outside with live cam, heavy, heavy rain overnight. Of course, Mike and Stephen been busy all morning. We're going to be checking in with them right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is October 14th, and KSAT has been on the air almost all night long, giving you updates on what's been happening out there. Yes, our weather team has been extremely busy. In fact, we saw uh, Sarah Spivey just leave the building right now. That's right. So uh, Mike and Stephen will be driving most of our coverage this morning, and Mike leads us off. Yeah, we've had a little half a foot or more of rain in many locations around the metropolitan area, and this is some of the heaviest rain that we got in our gen our specific vicinity. Uh, obviously, the roads are going to be wet. There's a ton of runoff. Some of the usual spots I ran into this morning, it wasn't just a little stream going across the road. It was wide, so you definitely have to watch it. As I mentioned, the heaviest rain continues to work its way off to the east and still this cell, which is just outside of our area. That's the cell that's now producing some severe weather well out there in toward um, far eastern Gonzales County. A lot of heavy rain continues throughout Gonzales County, Wilson, and then we do have a few more of those showers in behind that. And as you can see, we still have some of those green boxes. There is a flash flood warning in effect for Western Bear County up in toward Kamau County up until five o'clock this morning. And then this box here for Gonzales, as well as Wilson County, parts of Carnes County, that's in effect up until 645 this morning. We still have a few of these leftover cells that are popping up here, and this rain is falling on top of torrential downpours that we've had overnight. And even in just the past six hours, most of this rain in Gonzales County fell just in the past six hours with those heavy cells that moved on through. And the majority of it was not in western portions of the hill country, but from Austin back down in toward San Antonio. And some of these rainfall estimates up around uh, Wimberley, eight and a half inches of rain. Canyon Lake, about eight and a half inches, nine and a half uh, just to the east of San Marcos. And even down there south of Seguin, about eight to nine to nine and a half inches of rain. Like I said, obviously, flash flooding is definitely an issue this morning. Low water crossings, the usual spots are going to be flooded over and primarily on the north side of San Antonio, six inches of rain up there just around uh, I-10 inside 1604 over to the west around Helotus, about five inches of rain. And then in western Bear County, about four inches of rain. The heaviest is continuing to work its way on out of here and things are progressing even quicker. So the flash flood watch, which covered basically all of the area, Western counties have been deleted from this. It's still in effect, but I have a feeling that this is going to continue to we'll have some of the Western counties deleted from this as the morning rolls on because this is moving along much, much quicker than, like I said, it had looked like it was going to be moving on. Mold, ragweed are both on the low side, and this morning temperatures are going to be fairly steady. We'll have still some uh, showers and then the heavy rain off to the east. But again, it is the runoff. It is the, the usual flooded spots you got to look out for this morning. Then we're going to be clearing out later on today. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. Fronts coming through tomorrow. That sets us up for a good weekend. But again, it is going to be slow going this morning with more on the highways and byways. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest? Yeah, Mike, it has been a mess this morning. As we take a look around town, we can obviously see some slick roads out there. Could create some treacherous uh, traffic later on this morning. We're already starting to spot a few problems. Take a look right now. This is just a few of the shots that we're seeing around town right now. 281 at the quarry. Traffic moving through there pretty smoothly. But again, these roads are very wet. And it's obviously leading to a mess of problems. As you just saw there off of I-10 at Callahan, we had some first responders blocking the on-ramp there. But taking a look there at 35 at San Pedro, it looks pretty cleared so far. But the problems are persisting on the roadways. We really want to bring your attention to this shot here at I-35 at Von Orme. We just saw it on the rotator. This is an 18-wheeler involved crash. And this is a big thing that's happening right now on the roadways. Let's take you to the map so you can see how things are shaping up so far. That crash reported off I-35 southbound right at Von Orme Road. You can 
see already the lanes are starting to show some yellow and orange indicating traffic is building up in that area. This is something of course we're going to continue to watch throughout the morning, but as I mentioned, it is not the only issue we've spotted so far. Let's go ahead and do some jumping around here because we have a lot of high water spots that are being posted on the TxDOT website. This one off I 35 northbound at San Pedro Avenue as you just saw on the rotator again. These roads are very wet this morning and some puddles are still out there. Uh, this high water also detected off loop 1604 northbound at Petrenko Road. We're going to continue to do that jumping because it is very scattered around this morning. Uh, loop 410 eastbound at Austin Highway. Again, same situation. These are roads are pretty wet and you're going to want to drive with caution. We have the same situation happening here off I 35 northbound at Eisenhower Road. Uh, let's go ahead and jump up here though to loop 1604 eastbound at Petrenko. I'm uh, pardon me, Lookout Road, uh, not causing any issues thus far, but these flooded spots are obviously places that you are going to want to avoid and obviously lead with caution. You can see based off our road weather map, the roads are still pretty wet and we do have some ponding out towards Seguin, so make sure you are planning accordingly this morning. Let's take it back to this shot at I-35 at Vonormi, where we do have first responders still on the scene. It's going to be a mess this morning, so make sure you are planning accordingly. And our Jonathan Gotho is out there on the roadways, uh, I believe north of downtown. Jonathan, what are you seeing out there right now? Good morning, Stephen. I'm located on the corner of Jones, Maltzberger, and Bassey Road, right in front of the quarry and near 281, where you said traffic right now is flowing pretty smoothly. But let's take a look here at an example of some of this water accumulation here. This area is, is typical and known for its flooding. This is just a result of last night's downpour here. As you can see, the bridge there at the distance, the off-ramp onto Bassey Road there. You can gauge the water level of how high it's risen. Now, along this, this accumulation of water here, you can just see the downstream coming down flooding completely flooding over this bridge here in the, you know the collection of all the debris pushing up against that bridge this bridge has now been gated off and of course you know the motto here is turn around don't drown and luckily these gates uh, here are closed for that reason here at almost basin but of course this is just an example of one of the many areas throughout the city that has just collected a tremendous amount of water uh, we're going to continue to monitor the roadways here and travel to different parts of the city to bring you the latest on roadway conditions reporting from Bassey Road, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take a look at the CPS energy outage map right now. We had several thousand in the overnight hours, but uh, as of 437, we are looking at 585 customers affected all throughout the CPS energy uh, power area. Crews are working to restore things, and uh, don't forget to tell your friends and family to use our apps to keep track of the storms and stream us if your power goes out. And time now is 437 and it's about 70 degrees out there. Let's go outside right now. That uh, earlier shot of downtown looked rather ominous with those clouds. We're not quite out of the woods yet. Of course, as uh, Mike was talking about at length, flooding is not going to go away anytime soon. We have tons of runoff out there. And we're still keeping an eye on the weather this morning as we take a look at the radar right there. Be sure to download the KSET Weather Authority app to get updated on information wherever you go. And of course, we're going to be checking in with Mike throughout the newscast. Look at all the rain we've had so far. More weather and traffic coming up right now. You're, there is other news this morning. A massive fire in Taiwan has engulfed a 13 story building overnight, killing at least 14 people and injuring up to 51. Take a look at video from the scene. Firefighters are conducting search and rescue efforts to search for survivors. Officials there are calling the blaze extremely fierce. It destroyed many floors of that building. Taiwanese firefighters unsure of the source of the blaze. The building is about 40 years old with shops in their lower levels and apartments on the higher ones. Just outside of Dallas, body camera footage just released shows officers saving a man from a burning car. The Garland Police Department reporting that officers got to the scene to find the vehicle burning early yesterday with the unconscious driver still inside. The officers managed to get him out before the vehicle completely caught fire. Garland police say they expect him to be okay. A passenger had been the vehicle was ejected. Police say that person's injuries are not life threatening. The Transportation Security Administration or TSA says 40% of its workers are unvaccinated as a crucial deadline is looming. They need to be fully vaccinated by November 22nd, right before that busy Thanksgiving travel period. It takes weeks for doses to kick in, so time is running out. Even with the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, employees would have to have the shot by November 8th at the latest. TSA's administrator says the agency is creating contingency plans in case of an anticipated staff shortage. 
And time now is 441 and it's about 70 degrees out there. Up next to look back at some of the highlights of William Shatner's journey to space and back. And a quick look at the roads at Trans Sky. There's a look at I-35 on Army, a lot of flash flashing lights there. And of course, problem spots there at I-35 in San Pedro. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos again. In this morning's GMA First Look, William Shatner makes history. Two, one. 55 years after the legendary actor first uttered these words. Space. The final frontier. He would become the oldest person to boldly go into outer space. And GMA was right there after his triumphant return to Earth. Bill, what did you feel on your body when you were going up there? Things that can't simu be simulated. There was five Gs. At two Gs, I thought, well, I'll try and raise my arm, and I couldn't get it up. Five Gs is pulling you back. You're thinking, can I... Can I take much of this? And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of our interview with William Shatner, plus what his once-in-a-lifetime voyage could mean for the future of space tourism. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Van Horn, Texas. So we had those storms overnight, and flooding remains a problem even as of 445. Yeah, a bunch of problems on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasas. You know, and that's what we were really anticipating yesterday is that these roads could be messy. And right now behind me is a shot at Loop 1604 at Petranco. You can see right now we do have a vehicle that is experiencing some issues at this moment. Now, Texas has listed this as a high water location. As indicated, you can see also the roads are still pretty wet out there. Make sure you're driving with caution this morning. We're hoping that that drive is okay and can receive some assistance soon. Uh, but keep in mind, the last time we had a lot of heavy rain back in July, some of those Texas Hero trucks responded to over 160 incidents. So if you're still at home, make sure you're checking your vehicles properly. Make sure the tires are working, the windshield wipers are working, and obviously make sure that you're slowing down and increasing that distance between vehicles because there are a number of issues out there this morning. The one that we really want to get to first, though, is still this crash at I-35 at Von Orme involving an 18-wheeler. Right now, we do have some first responders on the scene. Not sure how long it's going to take for them to clear it out. So if you're driving through that area later this morning, just be prepared for some delays and pack that patience as well. So let's take a look right now. The map does show that I-35 southbound at Von Ormery is where that crash has been detected. You can see the buildup of the lanes already starting. It's just been stretching and stretching uh, at least for the last hour or so since I've been watching it. But uh, it's not the only problem we spotted on our roadways. Taking you a jump to a jump up here off I-35 northbound at San Pedro Avenue. That high water still detected out there. And that is what we've been seeing throughout the morning in several spots as that shot we showed you a little bit earlier with that car experiencing some trouble. We do have some high water of 1604 northbound right at Petranco Road and it continues a little bit further up. So kind of scattered around here on our map off Loop 410 eastbound at Austin Highway, seeing a buildup there in those lanes. And we're also seeing high water off I-35 northbound at Eisenhower Road. Same issue right here at Loop 1604 where some flooding is detected in those eastbound lanes at Lookout Road. So again, shaping up to be quite the busy and messy morning as as we're getting the day started. You can see our road weather map still does show we have a lot of wet roads out there and some ponding. So make sure you are driving with caution this morning. Uh, of course, we know that there's only a few vehicles out there right now, but we're going to continue to watch these issues very closely and give you all those updates. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, thank you. And someone's keeping track of the rain there. Yeah, got a lot of pictures like this uh, in and around town. A lot of rain gauges don't go over five inches, and most are full. And this is uh, here in San Antonio, about five inches. And that was so far as of 240 this morning. Also, um, the rivers, uh, the Blanco River up at Wimberley, the Camal and the Guadalupe, the Camal in and around New Braunfels and the Guadalupe Rivers, they are all uh, flooding right now. Not extreme at last report, but if you are near those rivers, you definitely want to watch it. And any other stream or anything like that, the usual spot like Jonathan Coto over there, um, right there by uh, Bassey Road underneath 281. All right, here's the big picture of things, and the heavy rain continues to work its way off to the east and we still have the flash flood warning again for Bear County, Kamal County up until five o'clock this morning. And then this box right here for portions of Kamal and Guadalupe County and then going up in toward Hayes County. That's in effect till 545 and then further off to the east, which includes Wilson, 
as well as Gonzales County, a portion of Carnes County. This is in effect until 645. Also, this notice how there's a uh, the orange box up here to the northeast just out of our viewing area, but that's the cell which earlier this morning did produce a, a tornado. There's a tornado warning to the south of Gonzales and haven't had any reports of any damage. A lot of it was just radar indicated, but there was some severe weather associated with that. And even last night uh, in portions of Kamal Kendall County right there, there was a radar indicated uh, tornado late last night about uh, eight, nine o'clock. Temperatures right now 70 in town, mid 60s in parts of the hill country. We're going to stay fairly steady and you can see the water vapor imagery. This is the stormy area and there's the drier air that's going to continue to work its way on in here. So that's what's in store for later on today. And the computer model also indicates that that this will all continue to work its way on out of here. We will see some sunshine later on this afternoon. It's going to be warm. It's going to be humid. We're going to be in the upper 80s, so we'll still be about four or five degrees above normal. Tomorrow we are going to be starting off with uh, maybe a couple of clouds around here and and then also notice during the day and watch right along about that line. That's the front that's going to be moving on through here. It will touch off a couple of showers. I doubt if there's going to be any thunderstorms associated with it, possibly, but it's going to squeeze out a couple of them. 20% chance for some rain. It is looking like most of that should be moving on out by the time we get into Friday night football. Also, temperatures will hit about mid 80s. Front moves through. Temperatures will start to drop down and you're going to want a jacket probably tomorrow night and then we're going to have some very pleasant mornings once we get in toward the weekend. Here's another view of the humidity dew point temperatures. And then as the front moves on through here, those dew points are going to be dropping down. So we'll have some very dry air in place. The one thing about the weekend, it's probably not going to be quite as cold. I mean, it's still going to be very chilly in the mornings, but maybe not quite as cold. We're going to have a lot of high clouds hanging around here this weekend. Still, it's going to feel very fall like. So this morning we have the flooding threat still continues and the heavy rain to the east that will continue to work its way off to the east. We'll have partly cloudy skies by noon, 82 degrees, and then a high temperature up to 80 eight with mostly sunny skies. Now tomorrow one or two showers out there as the front moves on through 85 front comes through about mid afternoon. Winds going to shift around to the north, kind of breezy. Then we get those temperatures down in the 50s over the weekend, not going for the upper 40s on Sunday because I think we're going to have just a few mid high clouds hanging around here, a little bit of a blanket on top of us. But again, great fall weather over the weekend. Get back into the 80s by next week. But again, this morning, watch it. Watch it for the flooding issue. Okay, the after the rain. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you, Mike. 452, about 69 degrees. And up next, a first look at Adele's new upcoming album, plus one of William Shatner's best friends reacts to his launch yesterday. We will soon be getting more music from Adele, plus the latest Halloween movie is about to arrive in theaters. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Somebody in there? There's a chill in the air, leaves on the ground, so it must be time for another Halloween movie. Halloween Kills is the sequel to 2018's Halloween, star Jamie Lee Curtis saying, if the last movie was about female trauma and violence against women. And 2021's movie is about a mob violence... Uh, a group of people, collateral damage coming together saying we are as mad as hell. We are not taking it anymore. The system is broken. We are taking matters into our own hands. Halloween Kills is in theaters for sneak previews tonight. One of William Shatner's good friends is thrilled that his buddy got to go into space. Henry Winkler telling me Shatner's Blue Origin rocket trip yesterday was an amazing opportunity. He's 90 and he is, you talk about taking life by the, the, the horns. Oh my God, what a thing. But Winkler says you won't catch him doing the same thing. No more rumors, it's official. Adele will be giving us a new album on November 19th, and it'll be called 30, as many have speculated. On Instagram, the singer writes, the album narrates a period of her life where she was painstakingly rebuilding her house and her heart. The first single will be out tomorrow. And Grammy-winning singer Usher just welcomed a new son named Sire a couple of weeks ago. Meanwhile, it's Usher's birthday today. He's 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 456, and it's 69 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, how the local bike community is reacting to the sentencing of a San Antonio woman convicted for killing a cyclist.
Plus, a major tech company putting out a new line of bacteria-resistant products. Details coming up in Tech Bites. And, of course, the roads are a major problem and will be for hours to come. You're looking live right now at 1604. Way out there at Northwest Military, more flashing lights. This is just one of many incidents that are likely weather-related. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Prepare for a messy morning commute. We're here in the traffic lab tracking all the incidents and have those updates coming up. We had widespread rain amounts anywhere from five to nine inches overnight. Flooding is definitely a threat. And it still looks stormy out there right now. Clouds are covering the top of the Tower of the Americas. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, October 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you got some sleep last night. Apparently a lot of rain moving through the area and I could tell, you know, just kind of just driving in to work this morning. Uh, I wasn't driving in the rain, but a lot of flooding out there. But speaking of, here's a live look right now at the Bear County flood map. Streets and areas closed due to flooding marked with red dots. At this hour, more than 40 streets are closed or are impassable due to high water. Also an important update, we're also hearing Comal ISD will be on a two hour delayed start today due to the overnight flooding on some roadways out that way. Again, Comal ISD, two hour delay. Let's get the very latest right now with Mike Osterhage. Good morning, everyone. We still have a lot of uh, flash flood warnings in effect around much of the area, especially from, say, Bear County off to the east. We're at 70 degrees right now. A couple leftover showers. The humidity remains very high. For the time being, the wind is out of the north. We will clear out later on today, and rain is actually, the whole event is moving on out of here a little bit uh, quicker than what it even had looked like it was going to do yesterday. 88 for a high temperature today with plenty of sunshine. It's going to be humid. We're still going to be about a good 24, 36 hours away from that front moving on through. The aquifer went up one tenth of a foot, but a ton of rain fell in the, uh, the recharge zone. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. All right, here's what it looks like on radar right now. And we the flash flood warning for Bear County was just uh, expired at the top of the hour. You can see that green box that uh, lights up and then flashes off. So that is has expired. But for portions of Kamal and then up in toward uh, up and toward uh, Hayes County, we do have a flash flood warning in effect till 545 and then also down to the south from Wilson County, Floresville, up around uh, Nixon, Gonzales, that flash flood warnings in effect until 645. All of the heavy rain continues to work its way off to the east, but we still have a couple of these showers in behind and this is just on top of really from northern Bear County, um, northern half of San Antonio, five, six inches of rain. That was kind of almost the norm and then it was even higher going up in toward Canyon Lake and further to the north through six, seven, eight, even nine inches of rain. And that was the situation down around, uh, say, southern portions of Gonzales County as well as Wilson County. And that was just in the past, uh, say, six, seven, eight hours when those heavy storms moved on through. So this will continue to work its way off to the east. Obviously, you're still going to see a lot of rain from Floresville, Nixon, again, over toward Gonzales throughout the rest of the morning. Now, the like I said, things are coming to an end quicker than what it looked like. So most of the area was under the flash flood watch until 7 o'clock tonight. Western counties have been deleted from that. I suspect that some of the counties from west to east may continue to be kind of deleted as the morning rolls on. So I don't think this will go in completely until 7 o'clock tonight. It's just a kind of a guess on my part. Storms to the east this morning, but we still have, even though it's not raining, all the runoff, all the flooding, the usual spots are flooded over. Mostly sunny, upper 80s later on today. Now, tomorrow, the front's going to move through. It may squeeze out a couple of showers, one or two of them here and there. In behind, it's going to be windy. We'll have cooler temperatures. Great fall weather this weekend. We'll still have a lot of high clouds around here, but it is going to be nice this weekend. But for your commute this morning, just allow yourself plenty of extra time. With more on that, Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest? Mike, it's been a mess this morning. Uh, we're taking a look right here off Loop 1604 at Northwest Military. Very difficult to make out exactly what's going on, but uh, there you can see we do have some flashing lights, and that is because our friends at Transcott have told us uh, that there is a gravel spill out in that area. So it's, again, very difficult to see exactly what is 
transpiring from that shot at trans guy, but we're going to watch that very closely. Uh, taking a look right now at the map, we're not seeing any impact when it comes to traffic delays, but you can see that we are seeing some closures out there. Uh, that seems to be the issue right now. A lot of high water spots and a big crash that we're going to take you to right now off I-35 southbound at Von Army. Uh, still working there, and again, traffic just continues to build in those southbound lanes of 35. Uh, something that's definitely going to pose to be a problem, especially if you're heading out in the next few moments. So make sure you are driving carefully or maybe planning that alternative alternative route already. Uh, taking a jump up here to 1604 northbound, we do have that high water still detected off Petrenko Road, and that is what we continue to find here at I-35 northbound at San Pedro Avenue. Uh, we told you about these high water spots that seem to be the trending issue. We're seeing it also right here off I-35 northbound at Eisenhower Road and also here at Loop 410 eastbound at Austin Highway. Uh, Texas still has this listed here, flooding at Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road. Yes, it is shaping up to be quite the busy morning. We are tracking these issues and these issues are also changing. Sometimes they'll clear out very quickly and then a new one will pop up. So make sure that you're driving with caution this morning. Again, uh, we're going to take a look at our inbound times right now because you're not seeing any issues if you're traveling to the downtown San Antonio area from any of our neighboring communities. In fact, even coming in from New Braunfels on 35, it's just 26 minutes at this hour. And in fact, our Jonathan Cotto is on his way to New Braunfels on 35. Jonathan, how are the roads looking so far? Good morning, Stephen. Yes, we're traveling on I-35 northbound. The road conditions right now uh, are pretty smooth, uh, wet conditions. However, the traffic is, is flowing pretty smoothly right now. Most of the puddling is off to the side of the interstates, and a lot of the accumulation of water is on the on-ramps and exits off of I-35 uh, northbound. Uh, same goes for the southbound traffic right now. Things are going pretty smoothly, but of course, we uh, are seeing most of the stalled vehicles uh, off, to, off to the side of the interstate here where you can see some of just the police activity. This is just an example of what we've been running into uh, along our, our trajectory to New Braunfels right there at the distance already. You can just kind of see the amount of water that's already built up right there. Uh, it seems to be like a water rescue that's taking place here. Some city workers assessing here the situation. Just the tremendous amount of water that you can see here just built up off to the side of I-35 northbound here heading towards Widener Road, uh, the exit coming up here. This, this scene and more, this is what we've been seeing traveling, but of course we're heading to New Braunfels right now to assess the situation and just the aftermath of last night's downpour. Steven, uh, reporting, we're going to be bringing you the latest from New Braunfels. I'm going to toss it over to you, Mark Stephanie. All right, Jonathan, thank you very much. Uh, needless to say, it was a very busy night last night on the roads, quickly flooding, leaving some motorists stranded. Meteorologist Justin Horn and photojournalist Asian Berea were riding in the case at Storm Chaser overnight when they came across a dangerous situation and rescue along Culebra Creek just before midnight. We're here at Old Grissom Road in Culebra along Culebra Creek where a high water rescue took place just minutes ago. That car you see here behind me, you hardly see the lights now as the water is rising up above that car. Thankfully, the occupants were rescued and pulled to safety. But that uh, car now almost underwater, and it just goes to show you the rain has stopped, but these floodwaters here behind me are still rising. The rescue was caught on camera by Paul Gonzalez, a nearby neighbor who initially tried to help the two in the car. It just came so fast in one big wall, and they still drove through it. Firefighters used their ladder to rescue a man and woman from the car, and as you might imagine, this is not the first time a high water rescue has occurred at this creek crossing. But this happens all the time. Normally, I put the barricades up, and even while I'm putting them up, people will pass me right by while I'm doing it. And I don't know how many people I've helped out of this, getting out of this thing before someone could come. Gonzalez hopes that this will be a lesson learned. I mean, that car is going to be a total loss, so I hope they have insurance or whatnot. But I, I, more than anything, you would hope people just don't go through it anymore. Meantime, the flooding was widespread. We encountered several stalled cars, including these in the turnaround at 1604 and Bandera. San Antonio picked up three to five inches of rain in a short amount of time resulting in the floodwaters. Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. 508, about 69 degrees. And taking a look outside with a live cam, like Mark said, 69 degrees. Not too bad when it comes to the temperature. Had a lot of rain overnight, and of course, a lot of flooding to watch out for this morning. And if you're just now tuning in, there's where most of the activity is. Flooding rains continue with a lot of lightning right now, mainly east of San Antonio, moving out of the KSAT area, but we're not quite out of the woods yet as far as those storms. Folks in places like Gonzales and Howitzville, we know you're getting hammered right now. We're going to stay on top of this right here on GMSA.
The Bay community reacting to the sentencing of Linda Collier Mason. She's convicted for the killing of cyclist Tito Bradshaw. Yesterday, a judge sentenced her to 20 days in jail. It was part of a plea deal. The deadly crash happened back in April of 2019. And originally, Mason was charged with intoxication assault, but those charges were updated to manslaughter when Bradshaw died. Some are not happy with the court's decision. It makes us feel like we're not important. And it makes us feel like like our lives don't matter, you know, like Tito, he had a seven, he has a seven year old or eight year old son. You know, I've got a nine year old son, you know, like I'm not saying, you know, that this person needs to spend the rest of their life in jail. I just think that there needs to be a harsher punishment. Mason's sentencing also includes 100 days on house arrest and 10 years on probation. Right now it's 512, still 69 degrees. And coming up next, details on a new line of bacteria resistant products from a major tech company. And Transguide right now, there's just one of the spots right now, 10 at Callahan. The rain may have moved on, but we still got a lot of pounding on water and roads and outright flooding in other places. We're staying on top for, of it for you with team coverage right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Truthfully, it's frustrating to see how fast dust reappears. But dusting with a cloth is a pain. And dealing with a bulky vacuum is such a hassle. Ugh. Ugh. So now we use our Swiffer Sweeper and dusters. The fluffy fibers, they pick up dust easily, grabbing it in all those hard to reach places. Gotcha. And for our floors, Sweeper's textured cloths lock all kinds of dirt, dust, and pet hair. Unlike my vacuum, it sneaks under and around places. Look at that. Dust free and hassle free. Stop cleaning, start Swiffering. I've been in the hospital for 76 days now. And by the grace of God, I'm still here. I died three times. They gave me a 5% chance of living. So I highly recommend everybody to get the vaccines and really protect themselves because this is no joke. Are you leaving the house like that? Like what? Old man elbows? You can thank your father for that. You need Jergens Ultra Healing Lotion to soften those suckers up. I love it. Thanks, Mom. Uh, okay. I'm free for dinner. And energizing citrus body butter. Jergens. In today's Tech Bites, new fallout after John Gruden's NFL exit. Electronic Arts says the former Raiders coach is being removed from its Madden NFL 2022 game. The move comes after Gruden's resignation amid an email scandal. EA says Gruden will be replaced by a generic likeness. Reddit is officially rolling out a new feature called Predictions. Users can compete by guessing the outcome of a sports match or an awards ceremony like the Oscars, but it's just for tokens and bragging rights. There's no real money involved. And the computer Computer maker Acer is listening to customers concerned about germs. It's planning to add an antimicrobial coating to more of its laptops, keyboards, and other heavily touched products. It's unclear how effective that coating is, so Acer says it's best to clean devices often. While you're at it, you might want to clean your browser history too. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. 517. A lot of problems here also on I-10 and Callahan. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasas. Yeah, we're really going to try to show all these problems on our Transguide shots. Uh, keep in mind there are plenty of cameras out there and there's plenty of problems as well. Uh, taking a look right now, this is a shot at I-10 at Callahan. You may have seen it on a rotator a few mo moments ago, but uh, this shows that we do have the on-ramp there that is currently blocked and it looks like it's in both directions of the eastbound and westbound lanes of I-10. So let's take you to the map, show you right now. Again, that on-ramp is closed in both directions right at Callahan road. Thankfully, still early enough to where we're not seeing big delays with traffic, but we are seeing plenty of those problems out there this morning. Uh, we do have that high water that we've been telling you about at Loop 1604 northbound at Petranco Road. A vehicle looks like it was involved in some sort of uh, single crash, but we're going to watch that pretty closely. First responders are on the scene there as well, and those high waters, uh, obviously in some different spots, but we have a crash detected not too far from there off Loop 1604 northbound at Gulebda Road. So uh, this could be the hour where we start to see more of those incidents popping up there on our map in our roadways, so make sure that you are driving with caution. We do have that gravel spill as well off Loop 1604 and westbound and Northwest Military Drive. First responders out there as well. Right now, I'm not seeing any buildup of traffic or particular closures that are going to impact that morning drive, at least at this moment, but that could change very quickly. So let's continue to jump around the map and show you how things are looking. This is still a problem there off Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road. That has not changed. We are seeing some high water spots in several locations, including here off I-35 
5 northbound at Eisenhower. Our map now picking that up. And so again, make sure your vehicles, if you see those uh, road barriers, uh, don't drive around them. Just find an alternative route this morning. So we uh, still have that high water off I-35 northbound at San Pedro Avenue. This right now is a trending issue, but the biggest problem that I've spotted so far is that 18 wheeler crash off I-35 southbound at Von Ormy Road. I was checking the trans guide shot there. Doesn't look like it's cleared out just yet, but it looks like they are making some improvements out there. Uh, taking a wider scope at our road weather map. It's been a very active morning out there. You can see if you've seen this before, you know that green does mean we still have those wet roads and the blue obviously indicating some ponding as well. So make sure you're making the best choices out there. If you get out on the roadways later this morning, really want to bring you that shot. As I mentioned, that 18 wheeler crash off 35 at Von Ormy still an issue out there, but looks like some traffic is moving through there right now. We'll have all those updates. So stay with us throughout the morning, guys. Yeah, folks, please be careful out there. Slow down and arrive alive because there is a lot of rain. I guess that viewer sent in five inches behind yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, another one, uh, a lot of these rain gauges, that's as I mentioned, as high as they go. And out there at the airport yesterday, before, up to midnight, picked up uh, the latest count was 2.64 inches, and that is a new record for yesterday's rainfall. It topped the old record by a full inch, but this was up in the Spring Branch, and it was pretty much you know, the whole big swath of the area from about Bear County up north just past San Marcos and then off to the east that got the lion's share of rain and even including uh, out there in portions of the hill country. So roads are still wet. Rain has come to an end here in town. We got a few straggling showers here and there, but notice how everything is pretty much come to an end. Obviously, the flash flood warning for Bear County was allowed to expire. Still got the flash flood warning in effect for portions of Kamal as well as Guadalupe County up until uh, 545. So for about the next uh, 25 minutes, almost 30 minutes. And then this is in effect up until this green box up until 645 this morning. And that's where a lot of I mean, another say six, seven, eight inches of rain in and around portions of Gonzalez County, Wilson County. A lot of that fell just since midnight. And also that was the cell and that's well off to the east now that did produce some severe weather earlier this morning. All right. It's still going to be warm and humid today. Then we get the front moving through tomorrow. That's going to pull in much, much drier air. Very fall like this weekend. Low temperatures are going to be in the low 50s, about 10 below normal, finally. And high temperatures only in, say, the uh, mid and upper 70s. However, the humidity will start to come back into the picture a little bit more than once we get into the middle part of next week. But perhaps another rain chance by maybe this time next week. So computer model takes everything, moves it on out. We'll still have some leftover rain off to the east later on today. And then tomorrow, now again, this is that model that kind of paints things in with a broad brush. There will be a couple of showers around, I think mid afternoon, early to mid afternoon as the front moves on through here. Most of that it's looking like should be gone by the time uh, Friday night football starts. Then we go into uh, Saturday and we are going to have now this looks a little more ominous as far as the clouds are concerned. I think we're going to have a lot of high clouds hanging around here this weekend. So that's going to put a little bit of a lid on high temperatures and keep low temperatures up ever so slightly. And we go into Monday, we clear out quite nicely and then more clouds next week. And again, by the middle of next week, it looks like we do have another rain chance around here. But as far as today, the whole big rain event is continuing to come to an end. Obviously, there's still a lot of rain off to the east, and then we're dealing with obviously the, the flooding as well and all the runoff. 82 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon, and then high temperature make it up to 88. So it is going to be humid, mostly sunny, kind of steamy out there, and obviously with all this moisture in the ground. And then tomorrow, we are going to have the front move through about mid- Oh, early mid afternoon wind will shift around. It's going to be breezy. A couple of showers get squeezed out and then much uh, cooler temperatures, mid fifties, low to mid fifties to start off over the weekend. Highs in the mid seventies. A lot of high clouds hanging around here. Another chance of rain midweek next week. I mentioned be careful on the roads this morning. I'm wondering if the fields are too wet for football tonight or tomorrow oh, night. True. And they got <laughs> soaked overnight. Yeah, they did. Uh, I think. I think as long as there's no severe weather out there mm -hmm. or lightning sure. that they would be able to play. Yeah. So mm -hmm. don't know about that. But one thing back to uh, the roads this morning, now there's kind of the usual spots where a little bit of water, more water than I've ever seen in this one spot coming in here on McCullough. Really? Yeah, it was, I mean, and it was kind of deep and very wide. So a lot of runoff yeah. this morning. Yeah, several years ago, I ran into a spot like that and turned my my car into a U-boat. Yes. <laughs> yes. I remember. And it is now in a junkyard somewhere. 523, oh. about 70 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at Peter Jackson's Fab Four documentary, plus a preview 
of the horror thriller, The Black Phone. Today in entertainment news, a pair of previews. One will make horror fans happy. And the other promises to make it a special Thanksgiving for fans of John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. But it's going to be such a comical thing, like in 50 years' time. They broke up because Yoko sat on an M. Documentary just grinding to a halt. Grinding to a halt, I think it's taking off. <laughs> Here we go. Here's your first look at The Beatles' Get Back. The Fab Four's recording sessions in January 1969, when the band was on the verge of breaking up, were filmed for a planned documentary. Instead, the footage was locked away for more than half a century. Now, filmmaker Peter Jackson has distilled nearly 60 hours of restored footage into a three-part documentary, which premieres on Disney Plus November 25th, 26th, and 27th. I trust you on this stuff. How's that look? It looks scary. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'm already frightened. That's a go? E oh, yes, of course. I still want to see it. 528, about 70 degrees. You're watching GMSA. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to have a look ahead at vaccine advices at the FDA are set to meet today to talk about boosters. It's almost time. We'll check in with our friends over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Oh, look at this cutie, ready to cuddle up with you. Are you a Hispanic adult whose parents speak Spanish, but you don't? If so, you're not alone. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. Hear from two generations about why the language may have been lost. Making headlines this morning, heavy rain has resulted in street flooding all across the San Antonio metropolitan area. Several people have had to be rescued. We have more coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, as far as the temperature is pretty mild right now at 70 degrees. And yes, that rain has seemed like it's moving to the east, but like you saw the video earlier, a lot of flooding out there. And a good morning to you. It's Thursday, October 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Let's take a look at the Bear County flood map right now. Streets and areas closed due to flooding are marked with red dots there. At this hour, more than 40 streets are closed due to high water. A reminder that Comal ISD will be on a two hour delayed start today due to overnight rain flooding roadways there. So look, for now, let's get an update with Mike. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, some areas picked up even northern Bear County, a good five, three, four, five inches of rain and even more further up to the north. Uh, a lot of the, the rivers, the Blanco River, especially up around uh, Wimberley, the Camal in New Braunfels, Guadalupe, a lot of the rivers are flooding and then downstream from there. Obviously, you're going to be dealing with that. And with all this rain that fell overnight, it takes a while for it to get on out of here, which is why flooding is still an issue. So the heaviest rain continues to work its way off to the east. No more flash flood warnings for Bear County. For uh, Kamal and Guadalupe County, heading up in toward Hayes, that's in effect up until uh, 545, so for about the next 15 minutes. And then further off to the east, it is this large area from, say, Floresville, Wilson County, up into portions of uh, Guadalupe County, Gonzales. That's in effect up until 645. And the rain, boy, I tell you, it was pretty much this area bounded by 1035 and uh, northern portion of Bear County out in the hill country. A lot of nice rain as well, but it just came down in buckets around here. A lot of six, seven, eight, even nine, close to 10 inches of rain in parts of the area. A lot of this down here, say around between uh, Seguin and Gonzales, a lot of that fell just since midnight or even sooner than that. It was coming down, like I said, literally in buckets, torrential rain and on the north side of Bear County, a good three, four, five inches of rain, six inches of rain estimated right there up around 10 at uh, 1604 at the airport officially up through midnight picked up uh, two and two thirds inches of rain 2.64 to be exact and that is a new record for yesterday's date now as far as the flash flood watch um, as uh, kind of guessed a lot of the counties off to the west are continuing to get deleted out of this a lot of the hill country has been deleted from that flash flood watch it's still in effect right along the I-35 corridor and then heading down 37 San Antonio um, Bear County, Kamal County, as well as Hayes County, in effect, and then off to the east up until 7 o'clock tonight. But as things continue to dry out, things may be deleted uh, as we go in late morning or even early afternoon. 82 at noon, 88 for a high temperature. Still some leftover rain off to the east, and it's going to be warm and humid today, but we got the front moving through tomorrow. So great fall weather still in store for the weekend. Details on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. 
probably a mess out there. Yep, uh, definitely an understatement. Mike, as we take a look right now, we do have a closure there off 35 at Salado Creek. Plenty of flashing lights. We've been seeing all of this time. Sim similar situations throughout the city and several shots at Transguide. Uh, right now we are seeing a road closure in both, both the north and southbound directions of 35 right at Salado Creek. Uh, area also known to, uh, prone to flooding in that particular direction. So again, uh, make sure you, if you're still at home, plan accordingly and start planning those alternative routes. This is through your direction, but right now still pretty green in those directions. But keep in mind as we start seeing more people out on the roadways, we could start to see a lot more situations develop throughout the morning. We still have the same problems we've been detecting throughout the show. And if you are just waking up with us, keep in mind there is still a closure here off of the on ramp at I 10 eastbound and the westbound lanes of I 10 at Callahan Road and not the only problem we spotted so far. We're just going to do that jumping. As we mentioned, we do have a lane closure there because of a crash off loop 1604 northbound at Petrenko Road. Also where high water was detected. We're seeing another crash not too far from there that looks like it just cleared from loop 1604 northbound at Gulebra Road. So that's a, some good news there and I think we need some good news this morning as we continue to jump around. We do have that gravel spill we mentioned to you a little bit earlier about there in northwest uh, the northwest side of town loop 1604 westbound at Northwest Military. The problems just persist this morning because we still have that high water off loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road where there's some flooding leading to some lane closures out there as well and they're off I-35 northbound at Eisenhower Road as well. So we have been doing a lot of jumping throughout the morning and let me tell you that we still have that high water again off I-35 northbound at San Pedro Avenue and that big crash involving an 18 wheeler looks like we still do have a few first responders on the scene but the good news there is that traffic is moving in those directions of the southbound lanes not as orange or red as we saw a little bit earlier so some good progress there overall it has been shaping up to be quite the mess this morning for the early morning drive still some wet roads out there and ponding in that direction according to our road weather map we really want to bring it back to trans guide one last time because we continue to see a lot of road closures out there as well so i think we're going to go over and head over to our katrina weber who's also live out there this morning in north uh, bear county uh what are we seeing right now katrina well, good morning, Stephen. Uh, we are seeing a flooded road, and in fact, this is this was the scene of a water rescue just a little while ago. It ended on the other side uh, of this flooded road. This is Blanco Road, just north of Dietz Elkhorn. We're in far north Bear County. Uh, firefighters tell us that they were called out here for a water rescue. Two people who were in an SUV. They had a third person, a relative who was on dry land and able to direct those volunteer firefighters to the vehicle and to those relatives who were in the water. Now, firefighters had to break out a lot of equipment to get to those people, including a Zodiac boat. Uh, they had to go out there and get the people. They did safely evacuate them from that flooded SUV and they took them out on the other side. It was uh, Spring Branch and also Bear Boulevard volunteer firefighters who were working on this effort together from both sides of this flooded area. But they did get those two family members out safely. And so uh, they are just reminding people, of course, if you see these barricades, don't go through them. It is dangerous. They say in this case, these people did not know the area. They were here visiting relatives and they had their maps on their phones that directed them this way. They ended up in trouble. But of course, that's a big warning sign. So if you'd see barricades, do not try to go around. It's a dangerous situation. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 538, about 70 degrees. And coming up next, gas prices continue to inch a little higher every day. We're going to tell you when we might see them go back down. Outside with live cam right now, you can imagine the rest of this story. We've had low clouds over the area overnight. Sh showers and storms have move through for now, at least in this shot. But the clouds are kind of hanging in there. And we are keeping an eye on the weather this morning, as you can see there on the radar map. Looks like the storms are moving to the east, but of course still a lot of flooding here locally. Be sure to download the KSET Weather Authority app to get up-to-date information wherever you go. And of course, Mike, it's going to keep us updated throughout the newscast. Good morning, 541. More weather and traffic coming up. But first, the skyrocketing gas prices we're seeing from coast to coast may be here for a while. Experts say the existing supply is simply not enough to keep up with the high demand. CNN's Jen Sullivan has a closer look at when we may see some relief. What's causing gas prices to skyrocket? One expert points to those dirt cheap gas prices we saw at the height of the pandemic, happening as most of us stayed home and roads sat nearly empty. That's 
the low price that then caused the oil industry to start shutting down production, which is why oil companies let tens of thousands of workers go, why they shut down so much production. Energy demand is back, but supply has not kept up, and that's driving up oil prices, leading to pain at the pump. Those of us on a fixed budget hurt more than those who do not. It's like you got to travel miles upon miles just to find a good deal. According to AAA on Wednesday, the national average price for gasoline hit a seven-year high of $3.29 a gallon. That's up seven cents in the past week alone. And the hike comes at a time when more people are hitting the road once again, with many returning to in-person work. Until those supply bottlenecks and oil production goes up to match the increase in demand, we could be stuck with oil prices that are at or near uh, or set new seven-year highs. And experts say brace for those prices to continue to climb. And Warren Relief is still months away. The supply side of these markets will kick into the gear, meet the demand, and prices will begin to moderate. Uh, you know, it's not going to be next month, next quarter, but I think by this time next year, we'll be in a better place. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 542, about 70 degrees. And coming up next, a furry friend standing by waiting for you to take them home. We're going to check in with the San Antonio Humane Society. And outside with right now a trans guide. The rain has moved out, but we still have ponding and flooding around town. And Stephen Cavazza is doing his very best to keep track of a whole lot of trouble spots out there. We'll have the latest coming up. Okay, we got a little guy here that was just like, Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Who is this little one? So this is Bazooka. Um, I love the name. <laughs> I know, right? Right in time for Halloween. So this is a two and a half month old uh, shepherd mix and is very calm right now, but definitely uh, going to get a big, big puppy. So we'll be playing a lot, running in the backyard, as you can tell with the paws. Oh my goodness. Yeah, those are some, those are some big feet on that yeah. thing. So, but <laughs> yes. That, that little face right now, I mean, that's just one. It's like, I, I just want to be held just and just cuddle. Yes. Especially today. Like, Short to coat, healthy. easy to take care oh of. Oh my gosh, yes. Easy, very easy. But again, going to take a lot of exercise yes. and, a, and a great jogging partner, great walking yes, partner. Yes, right? yeah. Once to get outside, especially okay. when the, it's gonna, the weather's going to turn cooler. And we'll have so much fun with you and the kids, and we'll keep you entertained. Yeah, what you got going on? So we have a great special. It's our Fall in Love adoption special. All of our uh, large dogs are 50% off, excluding ambassador pets. And that that ends this weekend, so come by and see our pups and our dogs and adopt today. Oh, and adopt little bazooka. Hi, hi, oh, poopy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, go over to the, uh, yes. the San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, or give them a call, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. All right, real quick, we want to update you on a new school delay due to weather conditions. Gonzales ISD, well east of San Antonio, will operate on a two-hour delayed start today. And here at home, still a lot of problems on the road. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. It's not slowed down just yet, Mark and Seth. We're taking a look right now at Trans Guide Shot at 1604 Northwest Military, where we told you we had that gravel spill. Uh, still, we have a pretty heavy first responder presence out there, and, and I can't tell if those are road flares right now. It's what it looks like, but it looks like there's also a flume of smoke coming from that location. Uh, we'll take a look a little bit closer there throughout the newscast and give you all those updates. So, of course, uh, stay with us for all of that, but it's not the only problem we spotted so far. Plenty of road closures here like at I-10 at Callahan where we do have both directions of the on ramp there both blocked at I-10 East and West. So make sure that you're planning those alternative routes because it's not the only thing we spotted so far. We also have a closure there off I-35 at Salado where you can see those flashing lights there on the frontage road as well. And a new one just popped up here off US 90 eastbound and westbound at Leon Creek on the frontage roads there. We know that that's going to be closed for the time being. Again, the issues are persisting throughout the morning. And as I mentioned that shot you saw a little bit earlier Earlier off I-35 northbound southbound at Salado Creek, still very active, as well as the one up here off I-10 eastbound and westbound at Callahan Road. A few crashes have cleared out, but we still have some high water detected here off Loop 1604 northbound at Petrenko Road, and still seeing the same situation developing here off Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road. Texas has not cleared this from the website, so we're going to continue to bring this information to you as long as uh, we still have it there. And of course, we know uh, we had that big crash though off I-35 southbound at Vaughn Army. 
The good news is that has cleared out and the roads are green in that direction. So that's the good news there right now. But uh, Search PD, an update from them. They've listed multiple road closures at this hour just a few minutes ago. Actually, plenty of hard market roads at 42, for instance, at Schwab and Hubertus. We're also seeing it at Schaefer at Cibolo Creek. We're going to get this on our KSAT traffic Twitter page and send you that update. So make sure that you're following us there for all those traffic problems that we've been spotting throughout the morning. But the motto of the day is turn around, don't drown. As Jonathan Gotha was mentioning a little bit earlier, we saw plenty of problem spots on I-35 and uh, again bringing it back to problems like this at Salado Creek where we do have these first responders out there making sure that the roads are blocked as a reminder and Katrina mentioned this a little bit earlier when you see those barriers out there don't move them around don't drive around them or don't drive around them find an alternative route because they're up there for a reason and for your safety guys Definitely, Stephen. Thank you. And it looks like this viewer kind of got caught in the rain while trying to take a picture. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when we show rain gauges and go, wow, three inches of rain, that would be one of the higher amounts. Now, this is one of the lesser amounts that we've seen in some of these rain gauges. And a lot of, uh, especially northern half of San Antonio, four or five inches of rain at least and then more on top of that. So still wet out there. Obviously it is not raining and some really good news as far as the aquifer is concerned that a lot of this rain fell in the not only the the recharge zone, but also the uh, the runoff area. And so that's going to be helping out the aquifer quite a bit. And some of these rainfall totals again up around northern um, Kamau County say six, seven, eight, nine inches of rain. So hopefully that all kind of percolates down in. We're already starting to see some clearing out to the west and with all the moisture in the ground that then spells fog. So Kerrville half mile visibility, three quarters of a mile up around Junction. And then this is just reduced visibility because of all the heavy rain off to the east. But that's what we're going to have to watch out for and probably tomorrow as well. Tomorrow morning, some of this fog because of the moisture in the ground. Again, rain continues to work its way on out of the area. And as you can see, nothing is showing up on radar as of right now here in, in and around town. We still have flash flood warnings in effect throughout the rest of the morning. This rain, again, this rain is continuing to fall there in southern uh, Gonzales County on top of eight, nine inches that has already fallen. And a lot of that came just since midnight or even since about one, two in the morning, and that will move off to the east, which is what computer models are indicating that will continue to get on out of here. We see some clearing then later on today. Like I said, tomorrow morning, I think we'll probably be dealing with a little bit of fog around here. Now watch what happens as we go into the early afternoon hours. There's this line right here. That's along the front that's going to be moving through, and it does look like it's going to squeeze out one or two showers, primarily this is looking at this computer model and another one's in agreement with this as well south of town and most of those should be out of the picture by uh, right around game time tomorrow night. It's going to be cool tomorrow night. Temperatures are going to drop off very quickly. As a matter of fact, by late afternoon, temperatures should uh, start to drop off somewhat. So we had the leftovers of Pamela from the Pacific Ocean poured all this rain on in here. Now we've got the big trough, which is bringing the front through here, and that's going to give us a fantastic looking weekend. We will have a lot of mid high clouds, though, I think around here this weekend. Still, temperatures are going to be just fantastic. Then we start to get a little bit milder starting off in the first part of next week. Another low, I mean, great fall type weather pattern is going to be moving just to the north of us, and this should throw enough energy in here to give us another chance of rain by the, say, uh, mid to latter portion of next week. 82 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today up to 88 with mostly sunny conditions. Now, tomorrow, front's going to move through about, uh, say, early afternoon, one, two or so in the afternoon, a couple of uh, showers here and there. Again, I think most of those are out of here by the time football rolls around. Good looking weekend, a lot of high clouds and then more rain chances, perhaps by about Thursday of next week. But I can't emphasize enough this morning. Watch out. It was a lot of rain came down hard and heavy. All the low water crossings. Yes, all the usual flooded all the spots. usual spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of running water. Thank you, Mike. 553 about 70 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, nine, four. Fireball. 3A, Fireball 0. Cash 5, number 6, 7, 15, 18, 22. Lotto, Texas, 10, 12, 21, 31, 41, 44. And Powerball, 23, 29, 47, 59, 60. Powerball 15, Power Play 2.
Good morning. Coming up on GMA, breaking overnight, 10,000 employees at John Deere going on strike. This as we track the looming strikes from healthcare to Hollywood across the country. We will have the latest. That plus much more right here on GMA. We'll see you soon. There are only two more days left to register in the Salvation Angel Tree, Salvation Army rather, Angel Tree program. Today will be your only chance to register both online and in person. For in person, go to 521 West Elmira from 9 to 4. Online, visit SalvationArmySATX.org. Registration ends this Friday. Ahead on GMSA, a man is pulled from a burning vehicle in the Dallas area. We've got the dramatic video coming up. There is some of it right there. And as expected, flooding rains moved through the KSAT 12 viewing area overnight. We've got problems in several spots, and our Jonathan Coto will be live up in New Braunfels, where the flooded Guadalupe River has affected a campground. Plus, some school delays to tell you about at the top of the hour. And Trans Guide, there's another one of those spots, a notorious flood spot, 35 at the Salado Creek. The storms may have moved out, but we are not done with the flooding yet. It will affect your morning commute. More from Mike and Stephen coming up. no doubt are happy to be back on dry land after getting into trouble on this flooded road. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. We've also got a crew in New Braunfels right now where flooding has affected a campground. Heavy rain affecting a wide part of the KSAT 12 viewing area last night. We'll tell you more about what to expect as you head out the door. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, the temperature is pretty comfortable there at 70 degrees. And of course, a lot of that rain has moved out, but the roads are very wet right now. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Thursday, the 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you got some rest. A lot of rain moving through the area. And we have some school delays in our viewing area due to bad weather. Comal ISD has announced classes will be delayed by two hours this morning. Elementary campuses will begin classes at 935. Middle schools at 1015. And Comal ISD high schools will start at 1055. And Gonzalez ISD is also delaying the start of school times by two hours due to weather conditions. So again, that's Comal ISD, Gonzalez ISD that will be starting school two hours later. Mike Ostrich joins us now. Our crews have been on all night long, keeping you updated. All right, we uh, have a, a chat site with the National Weather Service, and they send out uh, information. And just got this from Weather Service Marion in Guadalupe County, yes, sir. Uh, the town right, right along Santa Clara Creek. Uh, they have reports of multiple uh, high water rescues there. So we're going to look into that further. But uh, also the San Marcos River around Luling, there's some flooding there. The Blanco River up around Wimberley, where it picked up about nine inches of rain. Kamal in uh, New Braunfels, Guadalupe River as well. Well, so, but again, that was Marion in Guadalupe County, some high water rescues there and said we're going to look uh, look into that further. All right, rain has stopped here in town and where things are actually starting to clear out in portions of the hill country. Now we have a uh, half mile visibility in Curva, so we are seeing some fog, probably going to have some fog that out to the west today and then also tomorrow we'll clear out somewhat tonight moisture in the ground and that's going to add to the the fog issue. Now, as far as the uh, flash flood watches and warnings that was allowed to expire in Bear County, but it was extended till 645 for portions of Kamal County, Guadalupe County, and then heading up in toward Hayes County. Also down to the south here from Wilson County over toward Gonzales County. That flash flood warning is also in effect up until 645. And a lot of this rain in Gonzales County, I mean, a lot of this down here around Nixon that fell about six, seven, eight, nine inches fell in probably the past six hours ever since midnight and even sooner than that. So it was coming down definitely in buckets. There was also some severe weather earlier this morning around Gonzales south of there. Actually reports of a tornadoes, radar indicated tornado, but that obviously all has moved off to the east and that's going to be the trend as everything works its way off to the east. 70 in town, 67 comfort and 74 down around Stinson. The flash flood watch remains in effect from I-35 corridor, I-37 off to the east, but a lot of counties just in the past half hour, a good chunk of the hill country was deleted from this. And I think as we go on into the late morning hours and everything tends to kind of run off and drain off, a lot of these western counties, perhaps even Bear County, will continue to be deleted before this actually expires at seven o'clock tonight. That's the trend as things are getting on out of here and 
sooner than actually expected from when that uh, watch was initially issued. 70 today uh, throughout the rest of the morning. We are going to be staying fairly steady because of the cloud cover because of uh, still some of the rain off to the east. 82 at noon, partly cloudy skies. And then a high temperature today. It is going to be warm and humid. We're going to make it up to 88 for a high temperature, which uh, is still about oh, four or five degrees above normal. That's all going to be changing about midday tomorrow with the next big front moving on through here. So fall is on its way for the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, a lot of high water to deal with. Yep, uh, that's going to be the big issue right now, Mike, as you've been mentioning throughout the morning. Uh, we want to start here with Loop 1604 at Northwest Military. We told you uh, about a gravel spill out there a little bit earlier and as you can see the shot has basically remained the same although we are seeing some road flares out there and uh, some flashing lights indicating that there is a portion there that is still closed off but we're going to watch that throughout the morning it's still getting we're getting closer to that morning rush hour so we know this could be a big problem as we start to see more folks get out there this morning but make sure that you are driving with caution because it's treacherous traffic out there right now you can see the road closure off us 90 eastbound uh, on the frontage road lanes and westbound at leon creek uh, could be a problem a little bit later on. We're spotting a little bit of issues out there on Highway 90 itself, so something we'll monitor throughout the morning. Taking a jump, though, we do have another uh, incident where we see that road closure there off I-35 northbound and southbound at Salado Creek. Mark was mentioning it a little bit earlier. It's a notorious spot for flooding, so make sure that you avoid that area. Find those alternative routes this morning. Not the only road closure uh, we've spotted. Again, this one's still happening on the on-ramp. It's closed at I-10 eastbound and westbound at Callahan Road, but as I mentioned, there's still some of those high water spots as well, and we can take a look. It's still an issue out there at 1604 Northbound at Petranco Road and make sure that you are watching out here over off Loop 1604 Eastbound at Lookout Road. I was just checking the shot at Trans Guide. Looks like we're starting to see a buildup of traffic there as well and I'll get you that shot in a little while, but we really want to just give you the focus here and show you that we had a big crash off I-35 Southbound at Von Army caused big delays for the early, early morning commute, but thankfully that has since cleared out. That is a good area to drive through at this time, but right now you obviously are going to want to make sure that you're driving with caution. Make sure you're looking at the case at traffic Twitter page for all those updates. We're bringing you on there and online, so stay with us for the very latest guys. Thank you, Stephen. We have some late breaking news. We want to get to right now up in New Braunfels. The overnight storms flooding several trailers at an RV park. And our Jonathan Cotto just got there to the scene right under I-35 at the Guadalupe River. And Jonathan, what can you tell us about what happened there? That's right, Stephanie. I'm located at the River Ranch RV Resort where I can just tell you just moments ago, the water was actually where I'm standing. The devastation here has been tremendous. I had the opportunity to spoke with folks here. As you can see, a car here to my left that was underwater just moments ago. The RV toppled over here to my right. It's it's been chaos and those are the words they're using to describe the situation this morning absolute chaos i'm going to move out of the scene that we can take a little bit of the damage that's taking place here after last night's rainfall here you know i had opportunity to speak with the residents one man says he the alarm sounded too late he said it was minutes after that the water was just above his knees and his trailer was flowing down the river uh, and that trailer is now a total loss now fortunately uh, the manage the emergency management system personnel here let us know that no no injuries were reported. Everyone was able to exit their RVs safely and on time, but right now they're just trying to pick up the pieces uh, and get whatever material they can get out of their RVs. One man said the police were banging on his door, his RV, he was sound asleep, missed the alarm, and next thing you know, he was just knee deep into cold, cold water. Uh, again, this is the situation here at the River Ranch RV Resort, where residents here, folks here that, that, that stay here, um, are just trying to figure out what to do next. As you can imagine, one man losing his RV uh, and that's just floating down the river at this time. Mark Stephanie reporting from New Braunfels. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Now to far north Bear County, where Katrina Weber is at the scene of a high water rescue. Katrina, what's the latest there? Well, I think it's a pretty safe bet that there is a joyful family reunion going on somewhere on the other side of all this water, probably over in Kamal County. Uh, two people rescued from this water a little bit earlier this morning. You, you can see the barricades are still up. Uh, firefighters from both sides of this flooded water. We had Bear Bovardi and Bovardi Spring Branch that were working together. They had gotten a call about two people who were in an SUV who got 
swept away in this high water. Uh, they pulled out all the stops. They had some heavy equipment here as well as a boat. Finally, the boat is what did it. They put that Zodiac in the water, got to those people, got them out safely, but took them out on the other side of all of this. Uh, and again, a family member was here who was helping to direct firefighters to the area where those people were. They got swept away. Uh, they told firefighters that they were not from this area, so they were unfamiliar with the road. They followed the Google Maps on their phone and ended up right in the middle of all this water. Now the barricades are up, and so they do advise anyone, if you see a situation like this, don't even try it. Just avoid it because it's a dangerous situation. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, she's out there right now. It was obviously a very busy night with heavy rainfall, a major concern. Roads quickly flooded, leaving many motorists stranded. Meteorologist Justin Horn and photojournalist Azian Bermia were riding in KSET's storm chaser overnight when they came across a dangerous situation and rescue along Culebra Creek just before midnight. We're here at Old Grissom Road in Culebra along Culebra Creek where a high water rescue took place just minutes ago. That car you see here behind me, you hardly see the lights now as the water is rising up above that car. Thankfully, the occupants were rescued and pulled to safety, but that uh, car now almost underwater. And it just goes to show you the rain has stopped, but these floodwaters here behind me are still rising. The rescue was caught on camera by Paul Gonzalez, a nearby neighbor who initially tried to help the two in the car. It just came so fast in one big wall and they still drove through it. Firefighters used their ladder to rescue a man and woman from the car. And as you might imagine, this is not the first time a high water rescue has occurred at this creek crossing. But this happens all the time. Normally I put the barricades up and even while I'm putting them up, people will pass me right by while I'm doing it. And I don't know how many people I've helped out of this getting out of this thing before someone could come. Gonzalez hopes that this will be a lesson learned. I mean, that car is going to be a total loss, so I hope they have insurance or whatnot. But I, I, more than anything, you would hope people just don't go through it anymore. Meantime, the flooding was widespread. We encountered several stalled cars, including these in the turnaround at 1604 and Bandera. San Antonio picked up three to five inches of rain in a short amount of time, resulting in the floodwaters. Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. Now, Justin was here all night tracking all of that for you. Continue to follow our weather coverage on the go online or with the KSAT Weather Authority app. You'll find weather updates for our team and a live look at radar. You can also head to KSAT.com and click on the weather tab. And time now at 611 and it's 70 degrees out there. Are you a Hispanic adult whose parents speak Spanish, but you don't? If so, you're not alone. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA here from two generations about why the language may have been lost. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 70 degrees, pretty comfortable as far as temperatures, but boy, did we get a lot of rain overnight. We're going to be checking in with Mike about what we expect today and also with Stephen with those wet roadways. What a morning it has been on the roadways. 615 is the time now and you can see right now traffic is starting to pick up out there and uh, you're going to want to be very careful this morning because the problems are persisting out on the roads. Thanks to last night's rainfall. We're seeing a number of issues out there. Road closures, high water, including crashes as well. So let's take a look around town first, show you how things are shaping up. There's a shot of 281 at the quarry. Looks like people are moving pretty smoothly through that area, but you're going to want to drive with caution this morning, decrease the speed and increase the distance between vehicles because the roads are still wet out there. There's I-35 at Von Ormy and we want to show you another shot right here from Trans Guide Loop 1604 Northwest Military where we have that gravel spill that's still a situation out there that could be a bigger problem as more people get out there this morning. But let's start with those road closures here in town. US 90 eastbound, westbound and the frontage road lanes are closed right now, right at Leon Creek, which is a problem spot where we see a lot of flooding throughout the morning. So we'll keep our eye on that. We are also still have our eyes right here off I-35 northbound south and at Salado Creek where the roads are closed there in both directions because again that is a big problem spot for flooding and we're seeing the same issue up here of I-10 eastbound uh, I-10 eastbound and westbound at Callahan Road where first responders have the on ramp closed at this time uh, again high water a lot of the problems have stayed the same this morning uh, loop 1604 northbound at Petrenko Road there was a crash out there a little bit earlier this morning but right now Texas has that as a, a spot where we are seeing some high water and again that is what we've been seeing throughout the morning lots of scattered problems that right now loop 
1604 eastbound at Lookout Road and not too far from there. We had some more flooding off I-35 at Eisenhower. So again, it is shaping up to be quite busy right now on the roads. Looks a little dry out there, but don't let those looks deceive you. Again, make sure that you are driving with caution this morning. We have more road closures to keep you updated on, so stay with us for all those latest. But for now, here's Mike. Thank you Mike, very much, sir. And yeah, even though the rain has ended, it is the, the runoff and we still have flooding in many areas this morning. Temperature is going to be staying, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty steady right around 70. We're well above normal. Uh, a lot of humidity out there and where it is starting to clear out. I'm going to show you this in a second. We're already starting to see some fog and that's going to be an issue, I think, going into tomorrow morning as well. But then later on today, yeah, I mean, this will just be a, a memory. It's going to have lots of sunshine. It's going to be warm. It's going to be humid. Upper 80s again, five, six degrees approximately above normal. Another rain gauge that is just about at the brim. Look at that, about five inches. And that's just because that's as high as the rain gauge goes up in, uh, you know, Wimberley up north in in Hayes County in northern Kamau County picked up. This was a, the low end of things picked up uh, seven, eight, nine inches worth of rain. I'm going to show you a graphic in just a moment. Still plenty of clouds obviously out there, but the rain has ended here in town. Got some fog around Kerrville and further off to the east where we're starting to see a little bit of clearing. This is just some reduced visibility because of all the rain out here around Gonzales as well as LaGrange. So again, we're not picking up anything on radar in town. We don't have any advisories, any warnings in effect right now. Going up into Kamau County, this uh, flash flood warning is still in effect for the next uh, about half an hour up until 645. And same thing with the uh, flash flood warning down here around uh, Gonzales. And it's still raining around Nixon, Southern Gonzales County into Northern uh, Carnes County and latest radar estimates more than 10 inches of rain down around uh, Gonzales County or the city of Gonzales, I should say, south of Seguin, heading in toward Nixon, and then up here around San Marcos, five inches, excuse me, nine inches of rain, nine and a half, about uh, eight and a half around Canyon Lake. The rivers, the uh, the Blanco River up around Wimberley, that's uh, flooding somewhat. The uh, San Marcos River, or excuse me, the Luling River in San Marcos, San Marcos River in Luling, beg your pardon, um, Kamal in New Braunfels. All these rivers are going to be flooding. It's all going to be going downstream. The computer models do have some clearing by late this morning, more this afternoon. And again, with a little bit of clearing overnight, we will probably be seeing some patchy fog around the area. Now, throughout the day tomorrow, about, mm, say, early afternoon, there's the line. And you can see that line moves on out fairly quickly. That's the front. It's going to squeeze out a couple of showers around here, but then it's going to clear out and we're going to be windy. We're going to have cooler temperatures. Temperatures will be dropping down somewhat throughout the late afternoon hours. We'll take a jacket to uh, football games then tomorrow night and the humidity is going to be dropping off quite nicely as well with dew point temperatures, which are going to be very high today. It's going to be warm and humid, but when that front moves through again about early afternoon, that dry air continues to move on in here. So that's going to make for some very, very pleasant weather. And there's the leftovers of Pamela, which of course came across Mexico and put all that moisture in here. And now we've got the drier air that is going to be sliding on in. Although even we'll have, even though we will have nice fall temperatures this weekend, I think we'll still have a fair amount of high mid-level clouds hanging around here, but still it's going to be very comfortable. 82 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature today up to 88. Again, mostly sunny skies, perhaps a patch or two of fog tomorrow. Front's going to come through about early mid-afternoon. Winds will shift around to the north. It is going to be on the breezy side. A couple of sprinkles as the front comes through here, but I think timing is going to work in our favor as far as uh, Friday night football. And then the weekend, great fall weather, low 50s, low 70s for high temperatures, more rain by perhaps this time next week. But tonight for football games, just messy fields probably. Yeah, yeah, just uh, just leftover messy. But most fields are, are you know, synthetic nowadays, so I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. But yeah. uh, for those that don't have synthetic, it's going to be fun. Okay. Muddy fields. 620, about 70 degrees. And are you a Hispanic adult whose parents speak Spanish and you don't? If so, you're not alone. A new study found that nearly 70% of second generation Latinos in the U.S. are bilingual and fewer than a th quarter of third generation Hispanics speak Spanish. It's why our Alicia Barrera and R.J. Marquez spoke with a professor at Our Lady of the Lake University on KSAT News Now about this topic, who says the loss of Spanish between generations was generally a way of parents protecting their children from punishment or ridicule that they experienced. When somebody criticizes the way you speak, 
or the way you say certain things, they are criticizing you as a person. Sarah Costa spoke with Latinos from both generations to hear about their personal stories on how the language may have been lost. Third generation Latinos who don't speak Spanish are not uncommon. Arguably one of the most influential Latinas of our lifetime was third generation and didn't speak Spanish fluently. Yes, La Reina, it is well known Selena didn't speak Spanish growing up. She learned it later in life as she rose to fame. Other third generation Latinos who don't fluently speak Spanish, a pair of prominent political figures, the Castro brothers. Congressman Joaquin Castro says his grandmother spoke mainly Spanish, but he says after his parents were punished for speaking Spanish at school, he and his brother, former San Antonio mayor and presidential candidate Julian Castro, were taught English. It was beaten out of a generation of people. And also, if you look over the years at other immigrant groups, whether it was Italians or Germans or French, whoever, uh, over time, uh, there's always there's a, a loss of language. Norma Ochoa is 70 years old. Her first language was Spanish. And while in school in San Antonio in second grade, she says a teacher shamed her for speaking Spanish in the classroom. And it made an impact on her. I felt she demeaned me. I, and I felt that uh, I wasn't good enough to be there. And I just didn't, I didn't want to go to school. So after that, you know, after maybe a week or two in school, of having all that cast upon me, I just felt like I didn't belong there. That ostracization led to the decision to only teach English to her children. I definitely decided that uh, I was not going to let this happen to my daughters. Norma's adult daughter, Nicole, says she knows her mother did this out of love and protection. She doesn't blame second generation parents for not teaching their children Spanish, but society from that era. So I felt very separated from my culture. I felt very, um, I wasn't considered Anglo and I wasn't considered Hispanic, so then where did I fall? Castro says just because a Latina or Latino doesn't speak Spanish, it doesn't make them any less Hispanic. He says there are so many different ways to embrace your roots. You know, there's so much more to the culture than just the language. And, you know, and so I hope that, that folks will be proud of who they are, regardless of whether they can speak Spanish or not. Uh, and, and that folks will accept people you know, even if they don't speak Spanish perfectly. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Now 623, about 70 degrees. And still ahead, a dramatic rescue in North Texas caught on camera. A man pulled from a burning vehicle. We're going to have more on that. And welcome back at 626. Just outside of Dallas, body camera footage just released shows officers saving a man from a burning car. The Garland Police Department saying the officers got to the scene to find this vehicle burning early yesterday with the unconscious driver still inside. The officers managed to get him out before the vehicle completely caught fire. That driver has minor injuries. Right now, 70 degrees out at San Antonio International Airport. And we are staying on top of last night's heavy rain with team coverage. We're going to tell you how it'll impact your drive to work. They're blaming it on the map. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. A couple of people in an SUV say their phone led them into deep water trouble. I'll tell you more about it. And just ahead this hour, flooding and wet road conditions impacting drivers this morning. We're going to tell you what to expect on your morning commute. And outside with live cam, slowly drying out, but it's going to take most of the day. Mike's forecast is coming up. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is October the 14th. Thank you. Yes, my tablet flip sides on me. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, pretty busy morning out there. Uh, a lot of wet, wet roadways, but here's a look at the CPS outage map. That's right, Stephanie. Right now we're looking at, nope, this oh, is this the flood is map. Oh, this is map. Okay. Yep. So I can tell you about an hour ago, we still had several hundred people that were affected by power outages here in the Bear County area throughout the CPS Energy Service area. But right now you're looking at the Bear flood map. This source is the one pulled up and we do have a number of high water problems around town. And a reminder, we have some school delays in our viewing area due to the weather. Comal ISD has announced classes will be delayed by two hours this morning. Elementary campuses will begin classes at 935 and middle schools at 1015 and high schools at 1055 this morning. There is another one. This one east of San Antonio. Gonzalez ISD has also delayed the start of school times by two hours due to weather conditions. So again, Comal ISD here in our viewing area. Gonzalez ISD well to our east starting classes 
two hours delayed today. Mike Ostrage is here with more on our forecast for today. And Mike, I must say, this played out pretty much the way our team of meteorologists predicted. Yeah, um, the only differences were the fact that, uh, or are the fact that um, the heaviest rain was a little further to the east. I'm going to show you that in a second. And then also the timing. Now, we, there were indications yesterday that it was starting to move up a little bit, move through quicker. And that's been the situation as well, because there were some uh, computer models that were keeping it around more into the, the morning commute. First of all, as we start to clear out a little bit in portions of the hill country, half mile visibility out there. Now, here's the heavy rain, which is still, I mean, in some of our eastern counties, been getting a ton of rain in southern Gonzales County. As you can see, folks around Carnes County got a couple of big cells down there as well. And the Flash flood warning for Bear County, of course, was allowed to expire earlier this morning. It's still in effect, though, up in and around New Braunfels, also up towards San Marcos. That's in effect till uh, 645, so those should be expiring here in about 15 minutes. Same thing with this uh, flash flood warning for uh, portions of Gonzales County, but uh, there's obviously a new one down here heading in toward Cuero, and that does include Carnes County as well. So as everything continues to work its way off to the east and these heavy, heavy downpours continuing to see some flooding rains and it is coming down literally in buckets. Now, this is what I was talking about as far as the heaviest rain. Some computer models had the heaviest out here, the uh, Storm Prediction Center did, and uh, that was shifted over a little bit further off to the east. And boy, rainfall amounts, we're looking at six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches of rain down here, again, in southern uh, Gonzales County, near Gonzales, just to the east of Seguin. And that is what it obviously has been causing all the flooding. And even in uh, Bear County, we picked up a lot, I mean, just five, six inches of rain was very common in the northern half of San Antonio and Bear County. Now, we do still have the flash flood watch in effect, although a lot of counties in the Hill Country have been deleted from that. I have a feeling more will continue to be deleted even late this morning or early afternoon before it's allowed to expire at 7 o'clock tonight. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side, so we'll have storms continuing to work their way off to the east and then Mostly sunny skies, upper 80s for a high temperature later on today. It is going to be warm and humid, about five, six degrees above normal. Tomorrow, we are going to start off probably some fog in the morning. Front comes through early mid afternoon, squeezes out a shower or two, and then windy. It's going to start to clear on out. Great night for football tomorrow night. Great looking weekend. We'll have a lot of mid high clouds out there, but beautiful fall temperatures. More on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos, and needless to say, it has been busy this morning on the roads. You know, it's a mess out there, Mike. Tons of issues to keep track of right now. The one that we've been watching pretty closely is here at 1604 and Northwest Military. You can see that we, of course, we do have. Have plenty of first responders out there. Looks like we have some area that is blocked off as well, and that is because our friends at Transguide are seeing uh, somewhat of a gravel spill out there, but it is very dark to make out exactly how bad that is or maybe even how long that they're going to take to clean that up. But I mean, we're getting close to morning rush, so we know that with these problems out there, it could create for some treacherous traffic out on the roads this morning. So if you're still at home, start planning accordingly. Make sure that your vehicle is working properly. Windshield wipers, tires, fuel levels. Make sure you are doing everything you can to make your morning commute safe. Uh, we're going to give you these updates right now. That gravel spill of Loop 1604 westbound right at Northwest Military. We do have a portion there that is blocked off as you just saw from Transguide, uh, but not the only problem we continue to keep track of here off some high water. That seems to be this pesky issue right now. Loop 1604 eastbound at Lookout Road. We are seeing some buildup of traffic, but nothing too major right now. But nonetheless, you uh, this is the big problem that we've been spotting throughout the morning as we've been telling you about this high water here off I-35 northbound at Eisenhower Road, and we're seeing it also impacting some uh, areas, for instance, right here off I-35 northbound and southbound. It's leading to a closure right at Salado Creek. We still have first responders out there, but some good news to report that closure off I-10 east and westbound has at Callahan Road has thankfully opened up. The ramps are open out there this morning, so shouldn't be a problem. But nonetheless, make sure that you are driving with caution because we still have some closures there on the frontage road of US-90 eastbound and westbound at Leon Creek. And not too far from there, a crash detected right here off US-90 eastbound at General Hudnall. It it is pretty busy right now, and according to the city of New Braunfels, they're also seeing some road closures here at Common Street and Green Road. The bridges at Guadalupe River are closed right now, but that's due to possible debris out there. And right now we also have some low water crossings at Goodwin, Klein and Altgelt that are also closed as well. So again, it is pre pretty busy right now. We're posting all this information on our Twitter page at KSAT Traffic, so make sure you're following for all those updates. But of course, make sure you also have that weather app handy and are watching us here on GMSA because we have all the updates for the morning commute, but it has been a mess. One marking stuff.
Right now, we want to get back to late breaking news up in New Braunfels. The water has receded now, but overnight storms flooded several trailers at an RV park. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live right under I-35 at the Guadalupe River. And Jonathan, tell us what happened out there. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, it's been total chaos, or at least that's how folks here at this RV park, the River Ranch RV Resort, are describing it. This is what the scene looks like right now. Just RVs toppled over, vehicles moved around. And the information we have right now, we've spoken with folks who are staying at this RV resort. One man saying the alarm sounded off a little too late. He says the alarm went off, he ran out of his RV, and the next minute his trailer was floating away. The flood waters here are also managed to move around several vehicles and toppling RVs, as you can see just the damage, uh, the, the level, the extent of damage that the floodwaters were able to, to provoke here at this RV. One man saying he came here from California, you know, escaping just the wildfires and everything that's going on up here to come here. And this is what he is experiencing this morning. Total loss. Folks here now just trying to pick up the pieces. Mark, Stephanie, you know, the emergency management personnel tell us luckily no injuries were reported, but we're going to remain here on scene, talk with more folks and bring you the latest from New Braunfels reporting. Jonathan case at 12 news. All right, Jonathan, thank you. A GPS system is good for a lot of things, but maybe not for navigating around high water. Some people in far North Bear County learned that the hard way after they had to be rescued when their SUV got swept away. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Blanco Road, just north of Dietz Elkhorn. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that they were unfamiliar with that area. Yeah, that's what they told firefighters, and that apparently is why they were using the electronic map to try to get around. Instead, they ended up in deep trouble. They were in deep waters, swept away in uh, this flooded section of Blanco Road. And again, we're just west of the city of Bulverde. Now, uh, firefighters had to come in and rescue them. They were directed there by a relative of those people who was still here on dry land. The rescuers had to bring out all kinds of equipment to get to those people. Once it was determined that we didn't have very good access or safe access to the victims, uh, we made the determination to drop into Zodiac over on the Comal County side. And with that Zodiac boat, they were finally able to get to those people and bring them out to safety. They were checked out by paramedics over on the Comal County side and appeared to be okay. And what is not okay is this road. You can see it's still flooded and still closed off. And firefighters say if you happen to come upon a situation like this, don't even try to go around it. It's just simply too dangerous. Reporting live in far north Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you very much. Stay safe. The heavy rain impacting lots and lots of drivers overnight. This was the scene around 2 this morning at Dreamland near Vance Jackson on the north side. And that's where San Antonio police say a woman drove right into that high water. Firefighters were able to rescue this driver. And take a look at this video from the far west side last night. This is over 1604 in Wiseman. You see that one car stuck in the high water along with other cars attempting to drive through that area at right around the same time. And this is north of downtown at Agonier Avenue and West Ashby Place, not too far from San Pedro Springs Park. Firefighters got a call for someone stuck in a drainage ditch there around 11 last night, but no one was found. As you can see, though, there was heavy rain at the time in that area. San Antonio police are looking for a man accused of shooting two women late last night, killing one of them. It happened around 1130 last night on El Monte Boulevard, south of Basti Road and north of downtown. Police say a woman's boyfriend shot and killed her inside the house, but it's unclear why. Another woman was also shot in the arm and taken to the hospital. Officers do know who they are looking for, but as of right now, no arrest has been made. A man is dead this morning after he was struck by a vehicle on the northeast side. It happened last night near 35 in Riddiman. That's where San Antonio police say a man was walking along the access road when a driver hit him with their car. He died on the scene. The driver who hit him did stop to help and is not expected to face any charges. Right now, 641, about 70 degrees. And taking a look at the roads with TransGuide this morning, of course, a lot of flooding in the area. Some areas there. There's a look at Loop 1604 and Northwest Military. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos later on.
Plenty of flashing lights, high water crashes and stalls, and the morning is just getting started. Loop 1604 at Northwest Military. Uh, the commute you can expect to be a pretty busy one, at least if you're heading out in the next few moments. We have a lot that we're keeping track with. A uh, gravel spill detected here off Loop 1604 at Northwest Military. Starting to see folks getting out there this morning, so right now uh, not seeing that much of an impact. But keep in mind, again, we are getting closer to that morning rush hour. Do want to bring your attention to this shot at 281 at uh, Loop 410, where we have a stalled 18 wheeler, not causing any issues out there, but make sure you are checking those vehicles before you get out there this morning because we've seen plenty of problems already. Uh, that's all detected in the southbound lanes of 281 right at loop 410. But as you just saw a little bit earlier, that gravel spill is detected a little bit further up here off 1604 westbound right at Northwest Military. It has been a problem with high water spots still detected here at the eastbound lanes of 1604 right at Lookout Road. Seeing the same issue off 35 northbound at Eisenhower. Keep in mind these locations that we're bringing you, we've been talking about them throughout the morning. Morning. That's because they have been problem spots throughout the entire show. So we're going to continue to give you those updates, including right here where the closure is still taking place off I-35 northbound and southbound at Salado Creek. Taking another jump right here, though, we're seeing the same thing off US-90 eastbound westbound on the frontage roads at Leon Creek. Now I'm working with our friends at TransGuide to see if maybe we can get a shot up to confirm that this is still going to be an issue later on, but not too far from there. A crash detected right in those eastbound lanes at General Hudnall. Uh, you can be sure that it's going to definitely going to be a busy morning so make sure that you are planning accordingly and pack that patience. Right now, our inbound times are still pretty almost green across the board, but we're seeing some slowdowns on 281 coming in from Bulverde as well as Lavernia on 87 with 24 minutes and 28 minutes respectively. But the big problems are going to be on the roadways right now, so make sure that you're planning accordingly. Drive safe, increase, uh, increase that distance between vehicles, and make sure you slow down, Mike. Thank you very much. Good advice, sir. And boy, this was uh, again one of the one of the rain gauges kind of on the low end of things. Uh, Yvonne Cherney, I believe it's over um, towards SeaWorld area about Westover yeah, Westover Hills, about uh, three and a half inches of rain. But then you go north of there in uh, northern Bear County and it was about, oh gosh, uh, say five, six, seven inches of rain in parts of northern Bear County and more up to the north. And a lot of this rain fell in the uh, the recharge zone and or the drainage area. So that's some really good news as far as the aquifer is concerned. And we're talking about again, seven, eight, nine inches of rain there in portions of uh, Hayes County as well as northern and northeastern Kamal County up there around Canyon Lake and even uh, again, northern Bear County about five, six inches worth of rain. Here's what it looks like right now. The rain has stopped. Roads are still damp. Obviously, there's still going to be some runoff. There's still going to be, you know, the usual spots that tend to flood over seven or uh, three quarters of a mile visibility up there at Kerrville. Elsewhere, not bad as far as visibility, but things are starting to clear out a little bit with all that moisture in the ground. And you can see even more fog around Fredericksburg, Del Rio Junction. That's going to be something we have to watch out for, especially tomorrow morning because we'll have some clear skies tonight. So the rain continues off to the east and we have a couple of flash flood warnings in effect. This warning for a good chunk of Guadalupe and Kamal counties that was extended up until 845, as was the flash flood warning for portions of Gonzales County. And then further on down here to the south, that includes Carn City up toward Cuero and Hallettsville. That's in effect up until 1230, the flash flood warning. And it is coming down at the rate of about, say, an inch and a half to two and a half inches per hour and in this case that's about how much you're getting because these storms just are dumping loads and loads of rain in southern uh, Guadalupe County picked up uh, estimates of about 10 inches of rain. Excuse me in southern Gonzalez County uh, picked up estimates of about 10 inches of rain and a lot of that came in say six hours since earlier this morning. So we will continue to clear out later on this afternoon. It's going to be warm. It's going to be humid. We'll have maybe a few clouds starting off tomorrow, but also we we'll have to watch out for some fog like I said and then during the early afternoon hours right along this line right there. That's the front moving through. It's going to touch off a couple of stray showers, maybe Eh, maybe a thunderstorm thrown on and there'll be few and far between, but most of that should be out of here by the time uh, we roll on into tomorrow night. Temperatures will be dropping down late tomorrow afternoon and then going into the overnight hours. It's going to be kind of chilly tomorrow night. Grab a jacket if you're heading to a football game and then good looking weekend in store. 82 degrees today at noon and we'll have partly cloudy skies and then more sunshine later on today. We'll still have obviously some rain off to the east throughout the rest of the morning. Uh, 88 at noon. 
for high temperature with mostly sunny skies and it is going to be on the humid side. Tomorrow we start with a little bit of fog around the area. A couple of stray showers as the front moves through. It's going to be breezy. 85 mid afternoon. We start to drop down cool tomorrow night down to the mid 50s Saturday morning, low 50s Sunday morning. A lot of mid high clouds over the weekend, but still a good looking fall weekend. Uh, earlier this morning, Mike was telling us it's not quite as cold Sunday morning, but for a lot of us, that's yeah, cold enough. That's yeah. cold enough. Well, exactly. 52 instead of 49, <laughs> right. you know, just right. because of that little bit of cloud cover there. But yeah, it's going to be chilly. Yeah, we'll, we'll jogging still enjoy weather it. for you, right? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Going to be a personal much. best. 650 about 69 degrees and Hispanic Heritage Month will wrap up tomorrow and we'd like to place the spotlight on a group of Hispanics who are contributing to San Antonio in a big way. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam. See how things are going out there. Sun is slow to come up this morning. Tons of clouds out there. It was a very stormy night. Uh, thanks for tuning in to KSAT for the latest information. We're going to check back in with Stephen Cavazos. Get you ready to go out the door coming up next. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixent, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Oh, you guys. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks. For three. So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. Welcome back. We have some more school delays to tell you about. Earlier, we announced two-hour delays for Comal and Gonzalez ISD. Now we are announcing Marion, Navarro, and Seguin ISD also on a two-hour delay, so they'll be starting later than usual, of course, because of the flooding out there. Let's go to Stephen for the latest on the traffic. Not been a good day for the roadways. Mark and Seth, uh, we've been talking about it all morning long. Plenty, plenty of road closures out there. 35 at Salado is one where we're still seeing uh, some flashing lights out there in the north and southbound lanes. Uh, but we really want to first take your attention to this crash off I-37 southbound at Jones Avenue. Seen some building up of traffic, though, in the northbound lanes. You'll be sure we'll watch. We'll be watching that throughout the morning. Uh, still have that gravel spill. We'll watch off Loop 64 westbound at Northwest Military. Uh, but still some high water there off Loop 64 eastbound at Lookout Road, Mike. And we still have some road closures, like I just mentioned off I-35 northbound southbound at Salado Creek and over there off US-90. We got plenty of issues that we're going to continue to watch throughout the morning, so stay with us for all those updates. Mike? We have uh, some fog out to the west where things have started to clear on out and all this rain, uh, well, except in our eastern counties, but it is moving out of here more quickly than was initially expected. Still got tons of rain, obviously, down here. Flash flood warnings in effect from, well, New Braunfels, San Marcos through 845 and then through the rest of the morning down here from uh, Carn City over toward uh, Halifax. Charlottesville, Quero, rain's coming down at the rate of about um, two, close to three inches per hour. And we still have flash flood watches in effect till seven o'clock for uh, our eastern counties. 88 for a high temperature today, mostly sunny skies. We're adding those school delays to the ticker at the bottom of your screen. You guys be safe out there and we'll see you.